Yikes, what an interesting sound that was, right? It sounded like an ocean behind the dash with the passenger, the passenger side dash. <clears throat> and if you heard at the beginning of this video that sloshing sound of water, a lot of people's first thought is it's the air conditioning condensation, the drain pipes are not draining out the water, so it's getting caught in the system and you hear it. But that's not the case, at least not on my 1999 Land Rover Discovery 1. What is the case is air is in the cooling system. How did it get there? Open to debate. Um, I bought this used. I don't drive it a lot, as you know. I have a bit of a Land Rover collection, and when I drive it, I don't notice it that significant. But when I do notice it, it um, it's usually on acceleration. So I spoke to a lot of folks about this very issue, and you get a lot of different answers. First, coolant is low. Well, I know my coolant's not low. I checked it. My coolant is fine. Second, coolant is burning. You have a hair gasket issue. Go down that path. I'm not burning or losing any coolant. It's not leaking. I'm sure the head gaskets could be due at some point, but I don't think that's the root cause of my issue. So I spoke to a, a, a chap, I'll call him in the UK, and he's a pretty coveted Land Rover mechanic. And he said, Jason, he comes across this issue about 20% of times in Land Rover discoveries d1s like i have and he said you know and i usually can't diagnose it i can't find a solution he said he said it's it's something that's there in some vehicles and he said it just appears as though air gets trapped in the heater core and somehow nothing gets it out um so what you're hearing is air um in the heater core and it sloshes when you rev the engine or you go around a corner and accelerate um, with all Land Rover vehicles, the heater is a constant flow, so coolant is running through all the time. The heat is controlled by restricting air um, over the heater core, not coolant through it. So basically, turning the heater on high, I'm told, doesn't have a huge impact um, to try to get the air out. But they said the issue is the outlet for the heater, it's not at the top of the core. So it gives air the ability to get trapped in it, and sometimes it won't come out, and sometimes it won't. So I'm just going to do an old trick, and you typically do this when you do a coolant flush, or if you have to replace a coolant line, you know there could be, you know, air could get in the system. What I'm going to do is I, I have the Discovery 1 driven up on a ramp, only on the passenger side, so it's sloped. So my reservoir is technically higher than the radiator, and um, some people would take this out and lift it up. I'm just doing the old angle trick to see if it happens. I'm going to release the radiator cap. I'm going to turn on the vehicle and I'm going to let it run without the radiator cap on. I'm probably going to cut the heat on to be honest just to try to get things cranky even though I'm told that doesn't matter. And I'm hoping that I'll see bubbles come out of the radiator cap. So let me show you how I have this set up. I have never done this on a D1. I have nothing to lose though. It either helps or it doesn't help. I'm not going to have coolant leaking out and it takes 10 minutes to do. So let me show you how I have it set up and then I'm going to determine after driving the D1 all this week if it helped. So this is the setup I have. I have the D1 parked, parking brake engaged, passenger side up on the Rhino ramps. So it's creating a bit of an angle. And then what I'm going to do is take a socket, 7 eighths, and I'm going to loosen up the radiator cap. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen this up. Again, the engine is completely cooled. Never do this when it's hot. Now when you're doing this, you want to be very careful because this stuff is like poisonous to animals and all that good stuff and i'm surprised i actually have a little bit leaking out here just by loosening it but um the engine is completely cooled if this wasn't cooled you'd have a lot of issues a whole lot of this would just pop out and it could be a uh, problematic okay so what i've done is i've removed the radiator cap as i showed i took a funnel i put in it and it holds really nice and tight and then I just put a little bit of duct tape around it because I, I don't want that funnel to come loose. And that's because there's going to be fluid that bubbles up. You can kind of see some in there right now. So then the next step for me is going to be to start the car. 
and I want it to get to operating temperature and then I'm going to want to cut it off and um, I'm going to want to turn the heat on even though some have said that doesn't particularly matter. So I'll just go over to the vehicle. I changed the uh, location just because I, uh, I didn't want it on my driveway just in case coolant was to drip more than I expect. So I'm going to cut it on. I'm going to cut the heat up to level 1 as I'm doing right here. So I got the heat on level one, and I got the car on. And you can see that this fluid's going in there. And then the always recommend just squeeze the radiator pipe a little bit. And when you do that, you can see that it's making that fluid rise up and then you want to work see those bubbles that's supposedly what I'm told is is air in the system so you want to work that out and you can see that I'm not really getting the bubbles as much now Obviously, if I do it really hard, I will. So they said just let that run and let it get up to an uh, operating temperature. Uh, keep in mind, as it gets warmer, this hose is going to become hotter. So you're not going to want to just be touching that with your bare hands. And you want to just be very mindful of the fluid in here. You're going to have a little bit, uh, you see I lost a little bit there. But that's how you want, want to do this to try to get air out of your system. It's looking good now. I'm not seeing any problems. So let me let this run for a little bit. All right, so let's check the temperature real quick. You want to get the operating temperature. Operating temperature is 195 degrees. So it's getting kind of close. Take a peek in here. You can see as it gets warmer, you're getting more fluid in there because until it gets to a specific temperature, it's not gonna pull through the radiator. So that's why you gotta let this bad boy warm up. So that way you start getting that fluid. I'm not getting really any bubbles now. If I do a really hard squeeze, make sure I'm not losing and obviously any you lose you're going to want to replace and remember that coolant is going to be hot so you don't want to um you don't want to be spilling any of that on you what I'm doing now is just looking back here the fan has kicked on so the fan is running and things are pulling through the radiator So let me give this just a little bit more time, but that's pretty much the process. Have it on an incline, tilt it like I showed. I moved it now to a gravel driveway just because I didn't want to have um, any leakage on the asphalt. Let it get up to temperature. Radiator, fan all will kick on. And then just give this a little squeeze every now and again just to really work those bubbles out. You can see I got a lot of fluid coming up. so. You need to make sure you have an adequate funnel as a reservoir to cut it. But that is how I am attempting to fix the sloshing that I've heard on my 1999 Land Rover Discovery 1. Then uh, let me do this for a couple more minutes and see why I'm at with temperature. Of course, as you're doing this, you don't want a car to overheat. So keep an eye on the temperature gauge. And I'm going to go ahead and use my tool here. It's an ODB2. Um, code reader and I'm just going to go ahead and do a stream of the data of the actual temperature of the car see it's coming up in here let me give another little squeeze I'm feeling good about this though because I saw a lot of bubbles 
bubbles or air and the reason why you want it inclined is because bubbles rise to the highest point so let me just get in here and I'm going to show you what I'm doing I'm basically going down here to engine hang on data stream select items and what I'm looking for is engine coolant temperature I really want to make sure I know the exact temperature I'm looking to get it up to about 195 it's 199 right now so we definitely reached temperature so I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything off because I feel as though we're in a good spot we got the 201 there I suspect that's just because of the way this is running right now so I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything off you can see that this coolant is steamy so you're gonna want everything to cool down and then that in theory will drain back into the uh, into the radiator so let me give it a moment before I tighten everything all up so you might be wondering what I did or what to do with the coolant that came up and once the engine had a chance to cool all you do is just loosen this up a little bit and it's gonna just suck it all back in so your levels and everything will still be a-okay and you're not gonna have to worry about a big mess so when he did this procedure uh, coolant came up into the funnel I have that on there just for weight don't be alarmed and it got up to right about here and you don't want to just rip the funnel out that stuff will scald you it's 200 degrees you don't want to waste it you don't want it to fall on the ground it's bad for the environment so cut the engine off step away for 30 minutes I had a towel over it so no debris or, or ants or bugs or leaves would fall in and it gets into the radiator and then all I do is come back in 30 minutes unscrew the reservoir just a little bit and then instantly it's gonna suck everything back in the way it should be so that's how you'd want to do it and then you can remove your funnel and you can put the plug back on and everything will be in a uh, in a really good spot for you so I'm gonna go ahead and put this plug back on I'll start it up and we'll see how it goes okay so I just took it on a road test I was listening for the water sloshing and I used to know exactly when it would do it going around a turn accelerating and I did not notice it um, like I did before I thought I heard it one or two times after about 10 minutes of driving but um I if I did it definitely wasn't like it used to be and like you heard at the beginning of this video I'm just gonna go ahead and log in here and test or see what the engine coolant temp is um, I'm expecting to be around 194 degrees Fahrenheit so I can just go in here and I can say data stream I'm gonna select engine coolant temp and I'm just curious to see what the temp is 192 so yeah what I expected so overall um, I guess I'm, I'm pleased with that process. It took maybe 10 minutes. It wasn't that difficult. And I feel like it helped because I definitely saw those bubbles coming up. Now, I don't know, is that supposed to do that? According to YouTube, um, that's a good sign that those bubbles are working out. So I'm gonna keep an eye on everything, see how it progresses. I know at some point on this vehicle, we're gonna do head gaskets just because of the mileage and the age. I already did it on the other D1 I have. Um, but let's see how that goes and uh, maybe I solved an issue and uh, if I did let's see if it comes back and if it does and diagnose why so thanks for tuning in um, and watching this video on air in the cooling system on my 1999 Discovery 1.